slightly left side. Oh, a horrible oh, bounce. Oh, there we go. That's about four feet. <laughs> there you go. Hey there, me and my golfers, it's Piers and Andy, and guess what? We have an amazing special guest, probably one of, if not the best iron player in the world, and someone we mention a lot. Tommy Fleetwood, how's it going? Uh, oh, yeah, you all right? Yeah, great, great yeah, to great, see great you. Great, great to see you, Tommy. Thanks for your time today. Uh, no, this is this is cool. I, um, you know, texted my kids and said I was doing this, and they were more excited than, <laughs> than, any, than any of us. So. Brilliant, it's awesome. Well, I mean, as Pierce mentioned off camera, we were always talking about your golf swing and sort of using it as a bit of a model for amateur golfers. So we got you today. So we thought, well, look, let's let's understand <laughs> yeah. what you no do. <laughs> and when we've been at a tournament and we've seen you on the range, you're always working with your coach Alan and. You've got the lineman sticks down, you're doing drills and you're doing things. It'd be great to, to talk about some of the things that you do with your iron play because it's so good mm -hmm. that helps you manage your game and, and really understand what you work on in your swing. Um, yeah, good. It, it's, it's a very good question. I think um, I always feel like I need a club when I'm like, <laughs> talking about things. So I, I, I think simply, in the simplest way I can put it, everything we do is to give myself the best chance of um, putting the club in position at impact and giving myself the best chance to be out of my own way and hit a, hit hit the shot that I want to hit. So um, whether it's a backswing is kind of it's forever changing the backswing that always you know moves around. Sometimes I struggle getting it deep. Sometimes I'm taking it away, and you're always you know finding a spot. And and from from there the rest of it really you know I might have to do certain different things, but it's it's all around this sort of area in the golf swing is what we're trying to make work and you can't really be doing anything at that point to help your game so I think yeah one of the biggest things people always look at is my short and follow through yeah. um, and uh, I mean originally why why we did that when I was working with Alan I was inside I've always been a big drawer but I you know I was always pushing the ball further out I would always like save it with my hands I'd be wrapping over and all we did was hit punch shots for ages trying to time my body up, um, get my body to keep, it's all, it's all well and good saying your body to keep moving but you actually want it to timed up, there's no point keeping it moving and catching everything late and your arms yeah. having to catch up so punch shots for me were all about taking the hands and arms out of it and having everything timed up and then it just pretty much happened that I thought well I'm hitting it that good on the range I might as well play like it's that stuck. and then it stuck yeah. Well, let's hit a shot first, because I think sometimes we, we can chat for ages, but I think let's talk, let's just hit a shot. Let's go to flag number two, which is 182, uh, I think it is. Yeah, 182. Uh, um, and let's just see what this, this, this great golf swing. Down and off the left, and obviously he's going to have to finish the way he finishes. <laughs> Get a full wrap finish. Now. Well, see. <laughs> we don't want one of those, Tommy. No, we don't. <laughs> that's, that's real good, isn't it? It's just going to kick off the wind now. Uh, yeah, that's, 12 feet. it started pretty good that actually, so Didn't nice actually, slim divot as well. Yeah, I was going to say, that's interesting, so divot slight, I mean, <laughs> you can probably see we've been playing here a few holes this morning, <laughs> you can see where we've been, that's quite slim there, is that something that you've ever had to work at or? Um, I think, div yeah, divot gives a lot of feedback, um, whether it's the alignment that it's in, so if I'm ever playing bad, the divot's going to be going right, that's me personally. Um, and then the, the depth of the divot, and I think, um, again, you know, I'm, I always revert back to wanting to get inside, start it right, flip it a little bit, and as I do that, divots kind of get a little bit more shallow, yeah. and um, I might go on the range, or I might have a swing thought on the course, where I try and make a bigger divot and try and make it a bit steeper, but um, really you want the club just cutting through the grass as yeah. nice as possible. That's really good. That's really good. Uh, your standard shot shape, do you, do you want to control um, more of a fade or a draw? Which it's, is... it's, it's always been a draw. I've always fought an overdraw. What we work towards, I love the feeling of being as free as I can be and it being like a three yard draw, yeah. a four yard draw, not sort of holding on and, and fighting it. But um, obviously can hit fades. It's not my favorite shot to play. And if I'm ever under pressure, I always think like standing on something like the 12th of Augusta is a prime example. I'm never going to step up there and think I'm going to fade one in it. I'm, <laughs> yeah. There's only one way the ball's going and it's going to be going right to left. That's back so to one of those, isn't it? It's going right, right to left. So, um, so yeah, fade is a lot harder than me. I sort of handle it a bit better in the wind because it kind of forces you to do that at times, just hold it up. Um, but yeah, draw for me. And I, I'm a strong believer in um, it's good to be 
close to neutral, but I believe that you should have a bias in your game because yeah. you should always be able to do one. And if you're really good at one, it's better than being sort of average at everything Under the else. gun. So, yeah. That yeah. helps, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, 100%. Should we hit another one? I mean, yep. can we go to that back one? Can you hit 187 with the same club or do you need um, to change? I uh, the wind might help it a bit more, maybe because it's yeah, right. exactly. I'll Possibly. probably have to get, I'll have to crunch it a little bit, so oh, it'll end up like. being a bit steeper. But we'll this go for it. More like I like to play golf, Andy. <laughs> just whack it hard. Just whack it hard. That's like the. Yeah, that's exactly that. That's not moving. So there's obviously a bit oh. of drawing because it is definitely left to right. Oh, that is yeah. an absolute that's beauty. Like five feet. Why do we not have cameras up by the way? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Sean. <laughs> but you got a camera in your hand there, but not one up by the green. Let's go right up. <laughs> Should we, have, should we have a walk over to the rough? Yep. I think Let's yeah, get over there. Some yeah. different scenarios. Um, I think I'll carry the bag for you, oh, well, if you're okay with that. I'm not going to argue with that. Your I'll man is... Uh, I'll, I'll grab the ball. You don't need to do anything, Tommy. It's fine. <laughs> Your caddy's usually a lot taller than this. He's a big guy, isn't He's he? He's got a lot. It's a long strap, actually. Generally, when I uh, sort of take the bag and carry it somewhere, it's dragging along the floor. <laughs> You haven't placed that in a nice light there, have you, Tommy? <laughs> uh, it's all right, we'll throw it. There you go, there yeah. you go. There we go. So, look, obviously, we're not always in the fairway, and the guys Unfortunately. viewing this at home are often yeah. in the rough. Yeah. Um, but sometimes struggle when they're in this, in this situation. Yeah. Um, we're going to just play out a scenario. Maybe the, the uh, flag number two, which is 180. Okay. What would you do differently in in this situation with the rough, if it was maybe even sitting down a little bit more with a bit more grass. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to make it worse. Sorry, I'm making it worse. It's nice. What would you do differently in this scenario and what would you allow for? Um, I would I would look, the, the ball is going to be under less control. It's going to have less spin on it. I would, first of all, you have to judge the lie. That one to me looks like it's going to jump. Okay. Uh, looks like it's going to be a flyer. And then you, you, you know, then you have to assess what's around, where the trouble is, um, where can I go, where can't I go? And then, and then work it out from there because you're going to be between you're between two clubs a lot, but off the fairway you can control either. I feel like I can hit a hard eight or an easy seven or something off the fairway, and you've got both shots available. Where this one slightly less control, and you definitely want to pick one and 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 go from there, depending on where the trouble is. So if you you know if you would say the flag is one eight one eighty, and the front of the green is one sixty five, the back might be. 185 but yep. the runoff might be bad like you've got like there's different scenarios and then i would look at that and then i think right what's going to get the club what's going to get it to the front edge okay. say so i'd have worked all that out so um i'll put this one away because it, <laughs> it does look like it's going to jump a little bit so i would take um a nine iron club um, so a what, nine iron what were you before on that one from I, the 180 eight iron, eight iron so there eight yeah it's like a 170 to 175 club nine iron's like 160. okay so if, if i Guess 165 to the front, but I know I've got a bit of leeway for error, then I feel like nine's going to be um, fine if, if the ball jumps. So there's a lot of reading of the lie, and then, well, I guess I might have acceptance before hitting this shot, really. Um, if the rough was a bit longer, I'd want to be a bit steeper, just so I have less grass yep. to contend with. Try and, um, I, had, um, I did a thing at Bale one time, and it was... Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Arnold Palmer did like a coaching um, thing. You, you know, you get them like circles and you pull it and, it's, and it goes to like, um, it was like Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, so we had lessons of how to play certain shots and one of them I had to do was hitting out the rough. And he said, grip down on it, grip tight, move the ball back and swing more upright. So I've always kind of kept that in mind really. Yeah. I thought, well, if, he was pretty good at it, so I'll, I'll kind of keep that in mind. <laughs> This one I'm hoping jumps. Yeah, it's come out with a lot like less spin. Yeah. Oh. Landed so. and it's rolling. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's good. Over the bat, but it definitely yeah. did Back come edge. out a bit hotter, yeah. Back edge. So what would you do if you had to go to that front flag? Um, so you got sick, you got literally five yards on and it's five yards either side to the edges. Yeah, so assess the trouble. I'd be taking the shorter club for sure again. I think it looks like around the front edge is fine. Play for a flyer again. Um, there looks a bit more room to the right of the pin, so I'd be hitting it in between the pin and the bunker. And then I, you know, I think it comes to this point where you, you have other aspects to your game that you're probably going to have to like use and trust. Like I'll, you know, I might miss the green, but I'm going to say, you know, what, I'm all right. I can hit it in that bunker. If, if it goes in that bunker, I know I'm. Yeah. fine it's kind of a basic up and yeah. down or just short i can chip it on and 
and and have that to 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 go back on really that's just how i'd think so um i'm actually going to go one less club now okay yeah. so wedge and a wedge uh 180 oh no it's 161 it's 161 in the bag so now we're struggling <laughs> okay um I'm going to chip the nine now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what was so, that? Were you going to hit 52? So, so there you go. I'm not going to hit a 52. That's definitely <laughs> myself. So that was the title of the video. Tommy Fleetwood hits 170 yard, yeah. 52 degree yeah, wedge. I, I, I wouldn't back myself to do that. So um, at the same time, it might take a bit of the fly out of it because I'm hitting it that soft. So and we'll and try that one. would you advise for an amateur here as well, if they're looking at that flag, that if it is 160, they should be probably just hitting a 160 club and allowing for a bit of a fly because they generally want to go a bit past on this one because they're generally short. Yeah, I, I always think, like we play sort of a different game where we obviously always work to carry numbers and I play with my dad all the time and he goes, this club goes 145 and I'm like, dad, <laughs> it doesn't carry 120. Like you don't. And, you did and that goes, once. Yeah, it does, it goes 145. <laughs> and uh, we always have this argument, but I think there's so many people that are like that. They let the ball run out yeah. and then walk to it and then gauge the yardage from there. and. Um, that's not always the case. So I do always try and encourage like my, well, my dad or, or amateurs that I play with to just try and like take an extra club and get it like flying mm -hmm. all the way and don't be afraid because you never really see them go long. Yeah, that yeah, often. Yeah. It doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. And all the trouble is generally short anyway. And all so. the trouble is generally short. Bunkers yeah. are always like at the front because they stand out. And yeah. I like so it. Okay, let's see. I mean, it's a tough shot to that tight flag, but I'm sure Tommy's going to pull we'll, this off. We'll little chip nine nine. nine. A little chippy nine nine. Open my stance up a little bit to it. Looks pretty good. Oh, it's just going to bounce up nicely, surely. Oh, I had a little bounce left. Oh, it's just oh, front left. Oh, that, that's that still easy, nice. easy up and down. <laughs> yeah. That was a hard shot. That was a hard easy shot. up and down. Okay, right. Well, let's we move, move down a little further. We're going to do a slightly shorter one off the there fairway. Back on the fairway now, though. Okay, that's good. Um, if you got a choice to win one major, what would it be? The open. The open, yeah. No, it's not even close. Yeah. Straight in. Yeah, and I where? suppose from where you've grew up as well. Um, I golf. I would rather win the Open at Birkdale than I would at St Andrews. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, just for being at home, really. Yeah. Although I'm not going to be picky on the venue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sort of. You don't mind okay, that. You I'm going to pace that. this out. But yeah, the Open there? and then the Masters would be the second, for sure. I think that's kind of anyone who's from the UK. That's exactly what it is, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I think it's got to be the Opens. Yeah, it opens amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, it feels like it's ours as well, and it's more patriotic yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So when it comes to um, like short irons, then Tommy, when you've got hit a more controlled, um, I suppose more controlled distance and, sh and and shot, what do you do different to let's say you're hitting a flat out six iron? Is there is there a, is there a different intention with a with the I suppose sub 150 when you're going into the wedge game? I. Um I think that I have more available shots with an eight and a nine iron than I do with like a six iron. So a six iron, um, in general, I can either hit, this is nice, oh yeah, lovely. I can either, you know, I can hit like a normal six iron or maybe hit a hard one, maybe a bit of a smooth one, but it, like, it, it's not as easy as sort of a nine iron. So like 150, so like nine iron, for instance, I would have um, a full one, which goes 160 smooth one goes 155 and then I always have this swing with my wedges and shorter irons where I feel like I swing to my shoulders with my hands and that goes 150 with a nine and like what over 160 to 165 with an eight and then I just have like available yardages all the way down so then I feel like that's always comes out a bit lower so then I feel like I've got a lower flighted one yep. um, and then I try and quite often I try to hit if I practice I'd hit a full nine iron and then try and hit that distance with an eight iron and a seven iron so like I've got a bit of feel into them shots and try and like build it like that and then when you play you just try and play it and it either goes right or wrong really. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So having the options in the in the, the more lofted ones which I think well, that, that's a lot of people exactly don't what, use. Well that's exactly what you need really and when you do get to a six or a five iron for us with 220 yards out and of course like you're trying to hit a great shot and hit it close but the yeah. you know the majority of the time you're just hitting a good five iron into the middle of the green and then and then go from there like yeah. you're not you know you're not gaining that much normally if you stiff it then you it, then it's great but um short irons you need to like try and dial in as much as you can yeah, yeah. well okay. let's play so one we go. so we've got 150 yeah 150 to that front flag um it's already hit a couple of good shots that today that club yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how it goes now <laughs> so yeah just talk us through this one just to, as, i mean this is look pretty pretty simple maybe for this one i i mean yeah this would be this would be one that you would want to that any like you'd want to go at like you'd want to feel like you can be pretty aggressive um, for me, it, 
like the start line might be slightly right at the pin with no wind. I think the wind's just going to hold it today. Normal wedge is a 142 shot. It's probably play a 140-ish, so at the same time, if I pitched it six foot past, I'd be very happy. Like, yeah. Um, so like just stand up at a normal wedge, make sure I dial in on my start line and everything. As soon as you start getting closer, it's like you've got to make sure you keep the intensity and stay dialed in and then we'll go from there. I like it. He's going to want your irons now, Pierce, after that. That was nice. Slightly left side. Oh, a horrible Oh, well, there we go. Nice Horrible little bounce. It's <laughs> about four feet. There you go. Not with, with, not with his club. <laughs> no, no, there we go. Easy, go. easy, easy. Too easy. Uh, yes, hit one more. Can we get it to that one that's over the bunker on the right? Can yeah. we go for that one? Uh, what was that distance? That was like... So that's going to um, be... That was an extra... Let me tell you, that was an extra nine yards. Nine yards, so 159 yeah. to that. 159. So, yeah, then it starts... Gets slightly tricky. I mean, I'm probably at the point where you could force a wedge but I would probably go, when I was talking about the hands to shoulders shots and stuff, well, I've got a 150 shot with an iron iron. That's, that, feel, that is my um, hands to shoulders swing. I feel like that'll end, up, that'll end up perfect, really. I don't need to try and force anything. And if it goes, if I rip it and it goes a bit past, then I've missed that short bunker, really. Yeah. I've pitched it past, which is the better play. I think, I think the great thing, and I think you're probably going to say the exactly, same thing yeah. here as Andy, that not one club, so it's not like I have a yardage for an eight iron and that's it. Yeah, you yeah. know, you have lots of yardages for that. And we talk about it with tour players all the time. If it might go 150, it's got to go 145 and 140. And then yeah. as a result of going those different yardages, probably does a different flight window. Yeah. So you can then have different playability in the wind, for instance. Well, you, 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 need, you want options, really. Yeah. And, um, I, I, it sounds, I, I guess sometimes it can sound complicated or overwhelming when it's really not. And, it, and really, my irons kind of, from a wedge onwards, they kind of stack. I feel like I want them to stack up in five yard like um, segments. So like a, a pitching wedge for me, um, hands to shoulders is 130, smooth, it, smoother the full swing. I feel like I can hit it 135. A normal one goes 140, 142. That, so then... 9-9, nine, nine, hands to shoulders, 150, smooth, 155, 160, 8 iron would then go 65, 70, 75, and so on. And then that's when there's, there'll always be like small gaps, there'll always be changes in conditions. The wind, like, like a lower flight with a 9 iron is better than a full wedge, even if it's playing that sort of similar distance. So then you have to gain a little bit of feel with those parts. And it feels a lot, but for us, when we're practicing all the time, and, and once you have a sort of system, it's so nice to fall back on all the time. It almost makes decisions so much easier. Even though you've got so much information, it makes the decision that much simpler, really. Yeah. You've got more yeah. tools to use. And I yeah. think for the guys watching this at home who, they, who just go down the range and hit seven iron to 150, six iron, like experiment with changing up the, you know, I think with great shoulder height mm. sort of thought, maybe just start with that and experiment hitting an eight iron a little really shorter. Good. So it, it, it just gives you those options when you get on the floor. Yeah, that, that's always been a good one for me, really. Um, I feel like it's such a, an easy, you can kind of see it in your peripheral and it just seems like a nice swing for me to swing my hands to my shoulders. Yeah. And it might go a little bit past it or something, but like it, it just seems like a nice point and it's an approximate point don't yeah. get you don't need to get too carried away with thinking oh i want to get it on video and i want my hands to fit there it's, <laughs> it's an approximate but you'll find that it it there'll be like a certain number that you'll hit like that'll be within you know five yards hopefully or 10 yards and then you're always if you hit it within 10 yards six seven times out of 10 that's 30 feet it's actually not bad it's pretty good like yeah. um and it and like you can if you use information the correct way and you practice with you know different kind of thoughts or different feels you can actually make the game easier and simpler with more like information yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. more can equal like easier and less to you. just finding the feels that work for you really okay let's go okay. one then finish it off okay in style to that well i've been yeah. impressed so far yeah not yet not yet there's no always time i said hands to shoulders in the nine <laughs> Done it as well. Look at that finish as well. That like, that is I might need to go it's there. Right at the flag. Like, think you might have to go a bit. Oh no, I got there. No, that's good. No, that's probably about definitely, five feet. <laughs> five feet. I don't want to see any more. It's making me feel bad. This. That was pretty <laughs> impressive. That was pretty impressive. Actually, one thing we did do just quickly, we were doing some research on you as we do with everybody we film, and we found some great pictures of you when you were a little bit younger. The hair wasn't quite as long, but I think you should keep your hair because it's it's lovely. Oh, hair is lovely. Yeah, <laughs> cover my face up as much as possible, and we're, and we're on to a winner. 
Tommy, thanks for your time. No, that was great. Thank you very much. Really I enjoyed it. I love the game. Uh, I love talking, and it's nice to nice for you guys to let me come on. So thank you. Cheers, Appreciate Tommy, that. Thanks. Thank you. So, so what basically happened with the hair thing? <laughs> so I, I, it wasn't a bet, but it was like I, I lost a. We were playing. What we were playing? It was about a week ago. Though. Oh, it was, it was about a week ago, oh, and my job was to go and tell someone in the restaurant, tell the guy who was the waiter, you know, oh, you got lovely hair. The guy's bald, and I'm like, okay, I can't do that. So I'm like, waiting for a proper moment to do it, and what better time than we do? <laughs> <laughs> now, before you go anywhere, we have a one-time special offer just for you to celebrate our first ever video with Tommy. His irons were unbelievable. So what we're doing, we are doing a 50% discount on one of our best coaching plans, Ultimate Irons. Yeah, absolutely. It's been used by thousands of golfers at meandmygolf.com. It's been one of our best plans, some great success stories. We talk about how to strike your irons pure, how to get out the rough, how to get into the wind, sloping lies, and all the strategies that you need when playing into the greens. Now, all you need to do is use the code TOMMY. So click the link here, go to meandmygolf.com, use the code TOMMY in the checkout.